place. Move and move up and down every chair. Touch every individual of God. Collectively as well as in as, as well as individually, God. Your name to be praised. Your name to be magnified. Your name to be glorified. And so we bless you this morning. We thank you in advance for all that you will do in our lives. Great God that you are. We thank you, Father, even for things that we don't even know to thank you about. We thank you for things that we don't even know to ask you about. We thank you, Father, for life, for health and strength, oh God. As we dive into the word of God this morning, do all that you want to do. Touch, heal, and deliver, set free in this place. We give you the praise, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name, somebody, somebody bless the name in this house. Bless the name of God in this place. Come on, give God praise in this place. Take the roof off this place. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Let's dive into the word of God this morning. As we allow the biblical text to speak to us. Jeremiah chapter 1. We'll begin reading from verse 1. Walk our way down to verse 10. I'm going to break. I'm going to break. Uh, uh, preaching etiquette. Preaching etiquette suggests that you only really just talk about mention not, not more than seven verses but I want to break preaching etiquette this morning and uh, bring me down just a little bit help me out in the house and read ten, ten verses it's a familiar text but let's see if the Lord will allow us to extrapolate some points here to bless our lives this morning are you following me? The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah and in verse 1 the words of Jeremiah the son of Hilkiah of the priests that were in Abiathar in the land of Benjamin to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah the son of Ammon king of Judah in the 13th year of his reign it came to pass in those days of Jehoiakim the son of Josiah the king of Judah unto the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah the son of jo jo the son of Joash, uh, the king of Judah, unto, unto the crying away, carrying away of Jerusalem, captive in the fifth month. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, or no, Lord God. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the, word, the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand, touch my mouth. And the Lord says unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. You can stop right there. This morning, I, I struggled with this. With the, 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 I struggled with how to title, title this message. All, all morning, we morning long, I was going back and forth and isolate, just vacillating as to what do, I, what do I call this because there's a lot of things packed up in this text. And so this morning I settled on, I settled on, on I knew thee. 
I know thee. Look, look at your neighbor and just, just talk to him for the first time and say, I, I know thee. I, I know thee. Even though, even though you know you don't know him. But, 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 but just look, look at him and say, I know thee. I, I know thee. I know thee. I, I know thee. Come on. Look at your other neighbor. Maybe that, that neighbor wasn't quite cute enough or not, not quite handsome enough. And look at your other neighbor and tell him, I know thee. I, I, know, I know thee. I know thee. When, when we come into the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is not one of the minor prophets. He's a major prophet. He's one of the big boys in, in the Bible. You cannot have gone to the Bible without talking about Jeremiah. He is, he is one of the major players in the Bible. Jeremiah happens to be the, the 24th book of the Bible. In that text, it contains, contains almost uh, 52 chapters. In 52 chapters, we have almost, uh, almost 1,300 uh, words, uh, excuse me, 1,300 verses. In those 1,300 verses, you have almost 42,000 words. Jeremiah happens to be the longest, the longest book in the Bible, the book of Jeremiah. He is not an ordinary prophet. He's a major prophet. Now, when the Bible uses major and minor, it's not necessarily amounts to significance as it relates to substance. In other words, the quality or the quantity of the work, if you know what I'm saying. And so, Jeremiah is a major prophet in the Bible. He is the prophet they call the 11th hour prophet. The 11th hour prophet. When you go to the book of Jeremiah, God is almost, um, he is almost fed up with his people. Has God ever been fed up with you? No, don't, 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 don't look at nobody else. I'm, I'm talking about you. You maybe look at your husband and say, yeah, I know God is, is fed up with you because of how you've acted towards me. But I'm saying, has God ever been fed up with you? The book of Jeremiah shows, it shows how God was fed up with the people of God. Now, understand this. For as, as of when Israel began for 120 years, Israel, Israel was a unified nation. For 120 years under the reign of Saul, the first king, then David, the second king of Israel, then Solomon, the third king of Israel. They, were, they, reigned for all, they reigned for 40 years each. But at the end of Solomon's life, we find in 1 Samuel 11, Solomon disobeyed God and walked away. And the wisest man that ever lived walked away from God and served other gods because he could not contain his passion. The Bible says that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. How, what do you do with 700 wives and 300 concubines? I'm still trying to figure out what to do with one. 700 wives and 300 300 concubines drove him crazy and so God speaks to Solomon and says this it says your that this this nation Israel unified nation is going to be divided but but but, but I, I as I look at that I say maybe it was meant to be because after all, the man, after all, the man, the man that was called Israel was, was vacillating between Israel and Jacob. Always vacillating. Even in the, in the same text, you would find Jacob did this and Israel rose, rose up in the same book. And so when we come into the book of Jeremiah, the, 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 there is the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom are ten tribes. Somebody say ten tribes. Yeah, ten tribes. The southern kingdom are two tribes. The majority of that, the, that two, the, 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 the two tribes is Judah and Benjamin. Are you following me now? Now, now understand in, in, the, in the book, when we come into the book of Jeremiah, the year is somewhere around 627 B.C. Now, what you should, what, 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 the, the reason why I reference that particular message is that, it, or that particular date in this message, is that in, seven, in, in 722 B.C., the northern kingdom were destroyed by the Assyrians. So right now, when we look at Jeremiah, the, 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 the northern kingdom does not exist anymore. Assyrian, Assyria has come in and devastated the land. So they do not exist anymore. 
So when the, when the Bible is talking, when, when, it, when, 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 when uh, 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 Jeremiah is talking, he is talking in rest, retrospect to the northern kingdom being destroyed. Now, what, 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 what you and I should understand is the nation of Israel was what God chose by himself. He chose him to be himself. Are you following me? But because of a series of disobedience, rebellion, apathy, doing your own thing, understanding that, 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 understanding that, 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 that you are not your own person, that you didn't make yourself, but God made you. But because of the series of trying to be their own God, per se, God left them and turned away. And so the Assyrians came in, they came in to, 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 the, to the northern tribe and took the northern tribe. And now, what am I doing? I'm building a framework. No, no point in understanding uh, 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 or appreciating the picture if you don't, if you don't first of all, take, go back and, and appreciate the whole frame. So I'm building, I'm building the context. We've, we've looked at the text. But I'm building the context because a context without a text without a context is what? A pretext. Okay, 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 okay. What am I saying? I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make sure you get on my train because we're going somewhere. Okay, okay. So the Assyrians come in and they devastate, they, de they devastate, wipe out the northern tribe and take everybody captive. The Assyrians now become the major power. And they were coming down south. However, uh, however, the, the Babylonians rose up and they now defeated the, the Assyrians. Egypt, the Egyptians were, were going to the Assyrians to try to help the Assyrians out. Now, the king that we first see when we come into this text is, jo is, is, is Josiah. Josiah, jo Josiah was a good king. He was a good king. And so, because he was trying to stop, he was trying to stop the Egyptians from, 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 from going to help the Assyrians, he goes in there and Nico, the Pharaoh, killed Josiah. And so now, this good king, this good king that has, had a, that a, that a, that has always supported Jeremiah, and, and really theologians tell us that they grew up together, this good, this good king dies in battle. The question is, why does bad things happen to good people? This good, because Josiah, Josiah comes from a lineage, a, 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 a lineage of, of, of bad kings. The king before Josiah was Ammon. The king before Ammon was M M Manasseh. Manasseh was the, was the worst king that ever lived. The worst king that he sacrificed babies uh, to appease God, foreign God. I, are you follow me now? And so when, 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 when we see Jos Josiah come in, he is a breath of fresh air. He brings spiritual reform towards, throughout Judea. He, he built up the temple established temple worship, and gave priests their duties back. However, in trying to stop the Pharaoh, he dies in battle. He dies in battle. And so, and so, uh, 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 and so his son, his son, uh, jo Jehoaz, becomes king. Jehoaz becomes king, and now, ain't it funny how, ain't it funny how, you can have a family, right, a, a father and mother, give birth to, to children, and one of them somehow just don't get it. The devil, almost like devil incarnated. You teach him the ways of God, love on him, bless him, he eats whatever the others eat, but somehow, somehow they don't quite get it. And so hence this, 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 uh, 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 this king, Jehor, 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 uh, Jehor has, has, he, instead of, instead of picking up where his father left, he now goes back to being a bad king. Reigns for three months. 
Are you following me now? Three months. Three months. Now, 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 uh, 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 Pharaoh, Nico Pharaoh, and going back after defeating uh, 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 the king of Israel, he now takes his son and puts a man called Jehoiakim in office. So now we have what? We have, we have, uh, 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 we have Josiah, we have Jehoahaz, we have Jehoi Jehoiakim. Then, then the, the king of the king of Babylon now usurps authority and disposes of Assyria and Egypt in the battle of Carmesh. Are you following me now? And so now Babylon becomes the great power. So Babylon now comes to he comes he comes to Judah and now disposes of Jehoiakim and puts in Jehoiachin. Okay, okay. Now, now, what, what am I saying? Now, some of us are saying, some, 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 oh, Pastor, why, why all these names? I'm trying to educate you. It, it, it's the, before you shout, you got to know what you're shouting about. I, you follow me? Don't just shout without knowing what you're shouting about. And I'm not going to pastor an ignorant church. You got to know the Bible. It's all in the Bible. Somebody says it's in the Bible. Okay, okay, okay. And so now we have Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, who, 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 who Nebuchadnezzar set into office. Then he goes back and he sets a man called Zedekiah into office as the last king of Israel. And so when we come into our text, when we come into our text this morning, Jeremiah is preaching in all those five kings. He's preaching in what? All those five kings. All those kings have seen Jeremiah. Jeremiah preaches for almost 40 years. Are you following me now? He's seen all of those things happen right in front of him. All those things happen right in front of him. And so when the Bible kicks off in, in 627 BC, Jeremiah is a young man. Somebody say a young man. Yeah, he's a young man. Some, some, some say he's, he's almost, he's 17 years old. Young man. He's, young, he's a young man doing his own thing and having other dreams and, and acquisition and things that he, all the things that he wants to do. However, in, in 627 BC, God interrupts this man's life called Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a common name in the Bible. It's about nine men have that name Jeremiah in the Bible. It's very common. The, the, the name Jeremiah means, it means Yahweh, Yahweh will exalt. Yahweh will do what? Will exalt. Th there's also a double meaning that says Yahweh will cast down. Are you following me now? His father's name is, 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 is Helkiah, or, 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 or he'll, he'll, Hilkiah, Hilkiah means the Lord is my portion. What? The Lord is what? Is my portion. That's what his father's name means. And so this man called Jeremiah, this man called Jeremiah is 17 years old. And the Bible kicks it off by saying this. It says, then the word of the Lord came unto me. The word of the Lord did what? Came unto me. Okay, 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 you missed it. The word of the Lord did what? It came unto me. Not to my mama. To me. Not to my cousin then. But to me. Not to uncle or auntie. Are you following? But to, the word of the Lord came unto me. Now, 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 what you need to understand is, is that every prophet in the Bible, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, uh, uh, Zephaniah, Malachi, Amos, they always have that phrase, the word of the Lord did what? Came unto me. If you're going to do anything of significance in your life, the word of the Lord has to come to you. For you to persevere, for, for you to fight, for you to stay in confidence, for you to know what God has called you to do, the word of the Lord got to come unto you. The word of the Lord, what? It got to come unto you. Look at your neighbor just one more time and say, the word of the Lord has come unto me. The, the, the word of the Lord has come unto me. 
the, the, the word of the Lord has come unto The Bible says, the Bible says that, 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 that the word of the Lord came, he came to John the Baptist. And John the Baptist cried out, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Now, 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 understand this, that when we talk about Jeremiah, the, the Bible says, when, it, the Bible says in, 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 Matthew, in Matthew 16, when, when, when Jesus was in Caesarea, he asked them, who do men say that I am? Yeah. Who, who do men say that I am? The Bible says, it says, some say you're what? Some say you're Isaiah. Some say you are, you, you, you are Elijah. Then he says, some say you're what? You are Jeremiah. The prophet that has compassion. The compassionate prophet. So when we come into our text this morning, understand that we're dealing with a man that has sacrificed his life for the sake of the, the word of God. He did not, he, the Bible said that he was instructed not to marry because he wanted his devotion, God wanted his devotion to him. So Jeremiah never married. Hmm? Somebody said, well, I want God to speak to you. Well, well maybe, maybe you haven't seen Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah was also try, they also tried to assassinate him. His own folk. Now, it's one thing if folk that don't know you try to assassinate you. It's another thing that when folk go in your house trying to assassinate you, you know you're in trouble then. I, are you following me now? And so the Bible says, this man called Jeremiah, it says, it says, it says, it says, notice what it says. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Now, when we begin this text, it tells us when it came to him. Hmm? When? He t in other words, the time frame. Chronological. When it came to him. Or we can say, not even just chronological, kairos, uh, uh, not, not only chronos, but kairos. Kairos meaning the set time. So whatever the set time was, the word came to him. So we know it came to him at a, at a, per, at, at a certain time. What am I saying? I'm saying some of us this morning, the word of the Lord is coming to us. Yeah. Notice you can't pick and, you can't pick and choose when the word of the Lord comes to you. He shows up, shows up when you least expect. He busts, he, he, can, he can bust, he can bust when you're in the bathtub and just show up. Hmm? Just bust in there. What am I saying? The word of the Lord, what comes, the word of the Lord does what? It came to Jeremiah. So the Bible tells us when he came to him. The Bible also tells us, it tells us what he said when he came to him. So we know, we know when and what he said. So the question is, if the Bible says the word of the Lord came to me, that means the word of the Lord was somewhere before it came. Hmm? The word of the Lord was what? It was somewhere before it came. Now, now understand this. The Bible says this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And light shines in darkness. And what? And darkness comprehended not. So the question now is, if the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and he knew it, can I know when the word of the Lord comes to me? Because it's not that God is not speaking. It's are we hearing? The Bible says this. It says in John 10 verse 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. And a stranger's voice that will not follow. It says, in, it says in Revelations. Revelations 3. It says, I stand at the door and knock. Any man. Notice it didn't say any good man. It says any man. I, 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 I reject the notion that you have to be right for God to speak to you. <laughs> I said I reject the notion that you have to be right for God to speak to you. I dare say it's when you're wrong that he speaks to you the loudest. Cain killed a man and guess who came to him? God. Hmm? Moses killed a man. Guess who came to him? 
God. Paul, Paul was a terrorist. Paul the apostle. Saul called Paul. And guess who comes to him? God. So I'd reject the notion that I've had to be right for God to speak to me. I, I think it's in my wrongness that God talks to me. Yeah. I said it's in my wrongness that God speaks to me the loudest. Guess. Okay, 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 okay. The Bible says, it says that this man called Jeremiah hears from God. So let me give you nine ways that you can hear from God real quickly. Is that okay? Nine ways. This is I'm, I'm just, just nine ways that I can hear from God. B because, because if you're going to do anything of significance on the earth today, you need to hear from God. You have to have, a, you have to have an indelible uh, 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 conviction that I heard from God. Ain't no way I'll be doing what I'm doing today if I never heard from God. I said, you got to hear from God. And you can't hear from God by somebody else. You got to hear from God for yourself. I said, you got to hear from God what? For yourself. Okay. Nine ways, real quickly. Right, real quickly. Nine, nine ways that you can hear from God. Number one, number one, his word, his word. His word, his word, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you this very quickly because I, I, I got a, I, I got a long way to, I got a long way to go. Okay, his word, and you go, you go, Second Timothy three verse sixteen, talk about his word. It, uh, it talk, talks about uh, uh, the, the word of the Lord uh, uh, um, uh, is it, it, powerful and sharper than no, no, it, it, the word of God is. Um, uh, what am I trying? Let's go, let's go there. God, ba ba ba, cobrande hebo saha. Let's go there, let's go there, let's go there, real quickly. Let's go, let, let's go there. I'm, I'm tripping over that. Let, let's just go there real quick so you, so you know it's there. Okay? Second, what did what, I say? 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is what? Inspired by what? And is profitable for what? Reproof for instruction for, for what? For your correction. So that the man of God may be thor thoroughly furnished and equipped for every what? Good work. Is that all right? All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and for what? For right in righteousness, that the man of God may be what? Perfect, thoroughly furnished, and what? And unto all good works. Okay, very, I'm going to give you the rest. Number two, visions and dreams. Visions and dreams. Job 33 verse 14. Visions and dreams. The Bible says he will talk to you again and again in your night watches while you're sleeping. He will speak to you so you can hear him. Number, number three is, is the fivefold ministry. Fivefold ministry. Fivefold ministry. Bible says he gives you a, a, a pastors, prophets, evangelists, evangelists for the for the perfecting of the states and for the work of the ministry. In Ephesians chapter four. Uh, uh, number 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 three. Number four is believers through believers. Acts chapter seventeen. Uh, 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 Stephen was a, a natural. Uh, 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 he wasn't an apostle. He wasn't a believer, but God used him to speak the word of God. Number what? Number five is through angels. Angels. God will speak to you through angels. Angels, Luke chapter 1 verse 19, God spoke to Zechariah through what? Angels. Number, number what? Number six is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will compel you. It will teach you. It will, it will talk to you. Uh, uh, he will guide you into all truth. Uh, Acts chapter 8 verse 28. John chapter 16. He will guide you into all truth. Num uh, uh, number, number, number seven, he will speak to you through circumstances and situations. Circumstances and what? Situations. Well, I'm trying to show you the ways that God speaks to you. So you're, not, so you're not bogged down into just one thing. Are you following me? Well, if you don't, if you don't talk to me this way, then he don't, he don't, he's not going to get my attention. Who are you to tell God how to talk to you? Are you following me now? God will speak to you the way he wants to speak to you. And you have to be open are you following to the fact that God, first of all, first of all, what I, what I want you to understand is, is that God can talk to you. That God can do what? Can talk to me. Well, well I know God can talk to my pastor. No, no. God can talk to what? To you. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it, 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 with, my, with my messed up self. Yeah, with my broke self. Are you, with, 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 my, with my wrong habit self. God can talk to me. Are you following me now? Number, number nine, number nine, he'll talk to you through nature and creatures. Number eight, excuse me. Number eight, he'll talk to you through inward impressions. Inward impressions. Inward, the Bible says, in, in, in talking about Luke, Luke right in the text says, it seemed good to me. He didn't say, he didn't say, God told me to write the book of Luke. In Luke chapter 1 verse 3, he says, it seemed good to me. Well, pastor, why, why did you do it? It just seemed good to me. Yeah, I don't have to put God's name in there. It just seemed, it seemed good. It was an impression. Yeah. Many times what we're saying, the Holy Ghost, you know, let's not just fling that word around. Are you following me? Because when, it's, when it don't work, it, made you, it makes you a liar. It just seemed good. Yeah. I'm big enough to know it just seemed good for me to do it. He didn't say God told me to write the book of, of Luke, the gospel of Luke. He just said it seemed good. What am I saying? I'm trying to break you out of this, this, this religious uh, a genre that I have to put God in everything I do. Something, you know, something God gives you the liberty to do. You look, I mean, you in the game, take the shot. Stop looking at the coach. Say, coach, should I take this? Take the shot. Take the shot. Are you following me? Get the degree. Get the promotion. You're in there anyway. Stop waiting for God. Go, go to work on time. <laughs> you ain't got to hear. You ain't got to hear thus said the Lord. Just go to work on time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. N number number nine, number nine. Nature and God and creatures. God spoke through a donkey, you know. Amen. So just because God is using you, don't mean you got to get the big head. Because after all, He spoke through a donkey. A jacket. Okay, excuse me. Okay, okay. Let, let's get back in the book. Let's get back in the book. Now, 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 how do I know? How do I know that God is talking to me? Six ways, real quick. Now, 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 these are all, uh, this, is, this is just a sideline. Six ways. B because the Bible says, the word of the Lord came unto me saying. Now, the book of Jeremiah, we, we know, we know, we know, we know a couple texts in the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah, we know, we know this text right here. Before you were formed, we, we know that one. Th then we know, we know, we know, uh, 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 Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the plans and the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil. Those two scriptures, that's all we know. But in my 27 years of preaching, I have never really handled this text before. I have been spoken through this text. This text has personally spoken to me when I was called in ministry. I, and I understand the nuance of being young and being called. So this, this text is not only a text, but it is personal to me. Are you following me now? The word of the Lord has to come to you. Are you following me now? Stop, in other words, young people, come here. Stop waiting for your, your stop waiting for, Stop waiting to inherit your, your, your parents' God and know the God that you serve. Are you following me now? Have a relationship with God. I was a teenager when I met God. When I met God. I didn't want to meet him, but I met him anyway. I, 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 are you following me now? I, I, I picked it. It's not the Bible. Okay, okay. I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead from in my text, but I'm gonna I'm use preaching liberty and jump ahead and come back. Is that okay? Is that okay? The Bible says it, says it says it says you did not choose me, but I chose you that you may go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit may remain. Yeah, yeah. It says it says it says I mess around and called you a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. A peculiar people, a chosen generation, 
that you ought to call, you, you, that you ought to show forth the praise of him that has called you out of darkness, what? Into the marvelous light. God has called you. God has called you. I said God has called you. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, six ways, six ways to know when, when, when God is speaking to me. Number one, does it, agree, does it agree with the word of God? Does it agree with the word of God? God will never speak contrary to what he's already said. If you hear, any, if you hear anything that, that negates what God has already said in the 66 books in this Bible, that is not God. Are you following me now? Well, pastor, the Lord told me that to, 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 to go get that woman. Well, who is that woman? That woman is married to another man. Well, that ain't God. Hmm? That ain't God. Well, well, pastor, I believe that this man is my husband. Well, who is this man? He already got a wife and children. And that ain't God. I, I, are you following me now? Okay, okay. Number two, number two. Number one, does it agree with the word of God? John 1.1. 1, 1. Number, number two, does, does, it, does it have peace? Does it have the peace of God? The peace of God. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. The peace of God. Is, do, you, do you sense peace when the, when, when the word of God has come? Are you following me now? Or are you knotted up, twisted up? That's not God. Number three, number three, very, very quickly, number three, number three, number three, does it have the presence of God? The presence of God. The presence of God. When, 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 when folks start preaching the word of God, what happens? The presence shows up. Almost like a portal that connects you with heaven. Is the presence there? Number, number what? Number, 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 number four, number four, number four, does it require faith? Faith. Faith means, faith means you do all that you know to do and you take one more step. F faith, means, it, faith means if God says it, if God says it, I can believe it. In spite of my situations and circumstances. Okay, okay, okay. I, I got to go. I got to go because I, this is this is just this is just a durs. Somebody say a durs. Yeah, yeah, a d'oeuvre. It's just, it's not a main course yet. A d'oeuvre. Okay, 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 okay. Number, 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 number what? Number five, does it, does it require courage? Courage. When God tells you to do something, you got to step out there. Yeah, you can't, you can't be jelly back and, and serve God. I, I, are you following me now? You can't be weak kneed and, fall, and, and serve God. You got to set your face like a flint and keep it set. You got to be single-minded. Are you following me now? The Bible says from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violent, and the violent take it by force. If you're going to get it, you got to go take it. If you're going to have it, you got to go get it. Are you following me now? It's not going to fall on you. It's not going to fall on you. It takes, it takes, it takes focus to be successful. You got to wake up every morning having your face to where you're going. Guess what it takes to fail? Do nothing. Do nothing. Are you following me now? But, but, but if you're going to win, it, you, it, it costs to win. It costs to win. win. Winning is not cheap and it doesn't go on sale. Yeah. It costs what it costs. You got to be willing to pay the price. I said it costs what it costs. And you got to be willing to pay the price. Okay, 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 okay. Number, number, number six, does it, requ does it require obedience? Obedience. Obedience is the number one thing that God requires from every human being. Obedience. He wants to be obeyed and he wants to be worshipped. Those two things. But, you, but, but, but obedience is the number one thing that God requires. of everything. Are you going to obey him or, or look at your situations and circumstances and tell God why you can't do it? God, I would do it, but, but I would do it, but. God, I would go there, but. 
God, God, I, I, I would do that, but you got to get the butt out of the way. That's the problem. Got to get the butt out of the way. Hmm? Okay, 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 okay. Now, now, let's go back. Let's go back to the text. Go back to the text. Notice what it says. It says, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, if God comes to you, he has to say something. Are you following me now? Because there's, there's power in what he said. I thank God for his presence, but I cherish what he's saying. Are you following me now? The Bible says this in Ecclesiastes 8 and 4, 4 and 8, one of, one of those. It says, it says this. You can go, go back and look at it. I'm not going to do all your, all your reading for you. Okay, go back. It, it says this. It says where the word of the Lord is, what happens? There's power. Where the word of the Lord is, what happens? There's power. Once have I spoken, twice have I heard. Power belongs to our God. Are you following me now? The word of the Lord came unto me saying, what did he say? Because when, I, when I'm in my dark place, I've got to understand what he said. When, when, when I don't know what to do, I have to understand what he said. Are you following me? When my back is against the wall, it's what he said that's going to keep me going. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Well, pastor, I don't know. Well, that's your problem right there. It's not a bad problem to have. It's an honest problem to have. Because many times, many times we're, we, okay, okay, notice, notice we, said, we said we're talking about I knew thee, Right? Many times, many times we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are approaching a God that doesn't know us. What am I saying? The version of, the version, the vo version of what you are using to approach God is not the version that he knows. What am I saying? You keep going to God with mask on. Take the mask off. Take the mask off. Are you following me now? God already knows your address. I said he already knows what? Your address. The Bible says, the Bible says in, in Isaiah 46, it says, it says he knows the end from the beginning. So, so if he knows the end from the beginning, stop trying to impress folk. Some of us, we're just impressive, too much people. You impress folks so much that you don't even know who you are. Don't even know who you are. Trying to be bougie and just, why don't you, why don't you just be normal? Yeah, just be normal. Be who God has called. Notice it says, it says no, no, okay, 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 okay. L let, me, let me jump in. Notice it says, it says, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I form thee, before I form thee, so God is the one that forms us. Yeah, the Bible says in Isaiah 43, he says, I created him, Jacob, I formed him, Israel. <laughs> I created him, Jacob, Jacob means twisted. It means heel catcher. It means conniver. Hmm? It means it means it, it, it means deceiver. I created him Jacob, but I formed him into Israel. Israel means a prince. A prince. You've wrestled with God and yet you prevailed. Are you following me this morning? So God is the one that forms you. It's amazing how when we, okay, 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 let me do, can, can, can I preach this like I feel it? Okay, the, the, the Bible says, it says, it says, it says, when we first mess, when we, when we first meet God, God is forming. He's forming the universe. The Bible says he spoke and it began to, it says, it says, in the beginning, the word, in the beginning, uh, God created the, earth, the heaven and the earth and the, and the earth was without form, without form, without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the earth. And the spirit of God did what? He moved upon the face of the earth and he said this, he said, let that be. And what, what was he doing? He was forming. 
he was forming. So when we first beat God, God, God was who want, he was forming. So just because, because you're not where you want to be doesn't mean God has finished forming you yet. God is the one he's forming me. P please be patient with me because G G God is forming me. I, I, I know you need me to be better than what I am right now, but please be patient with me because God is forming me. I'm not done yet. God is forming me. The Bible says it, it, it's, in, it, it's in Jeremiah that we find Jeremiah in the porter's house. And in the porter's house, God is forming the porter. Forming the clay into what he needs him to be. He's in the forming business. I said he's in the forming business. And so he would take he would take a David and forms form, form a David into a king. He's in the what? He's in the forming business. He would take a Moses, a murderer, and, and, and take a murderer and form it into, into the, the, the deliver, deliverer of Israel because God is what in the forming business. He would take he would take he would take a he, he would take a, a, a Saul terrorist and form it into one of the greatest apostles that ever lived because God is in the forming business. Look at your neighbor the third time and tell him God is forming me. God is God is forming me. He's forming me. God is forming me. God is forming me. God is doing what is forming me. Okay, 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 okay. Notice, 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 notice. Let's, let, let, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. It says, it says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Now, I'm not going to try to be politically correct or whatever the case may be. No, I'm not trying to cross politically political lines I'm not I'm not for, I'm, I, I'm not I'm not for I'm, are you follow me now I'm not for the elephant nor am I for the donkey I, I, I'm for the lion of the tribe of Judah are you following me this morning so I'm not trying to be any of those donkeys uh, no elephant but I'm going to be for the lion of the tribe of Judah in this place but the Bible says this before you are formed in the belly I know thee I know thee I knew thee. So I knew you. I knew you before that happened. I knew you before the heartbreak. I knew you before the disappointment. I knew, I knew you before the tears. I knew you before you were let go. I, I, I knew you. I knew you before you got your first job. I knew you before the, the betrayal. I, I, I knew you before you lied. I knew you before the divorce. I know you. I know you. God knows you. I know thee. I know thee. That should give us great comfort that whatever, wherever we are in life, God knows me. God knows me. That whatever, that whatever, whatever I'm, I'm missing and whatever I'm good at, God knows me. Whatever is not quite right in my life, whatever is, whatever is not quite all the way together in my life, God knows me. God knows me. So I'm not going to lift up your head, O ye gates, because God knows you. God knows you. So I'm not going to be embarrassed. I'm not going to try to apologize. I'm not going to tiptoe around life because God knows me. God knows me. You may not know me, but God knows me. God knows me. He knows, he knows exactly who I am, and he accepted me 100%. The Bible says he formed you, and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. My heart does well because God formed you and knows you. He says before you were in your mother's womb, before the disappointment, before the heartache, before the heartbreak, before the let go, before everything wrong in your life, I knew you. I knew you. And I ordained, I got to hurry up, I got to hurry up. And I ordained you a prophet to Judah, no. To Israel, no. To the nations. God knows you and he still thinks big of you. I say God knows you and he still thinks big of you. Regardless of everything you've done wrong, what you did last night does not negate who you are. I said what you did last night does not negate who you are. You are the child of the most high God and God knows you. God knows you. 
as I, str- as I, as I wrestled with this message, the, I said, what do you want me to call it? Te-? He said, tell him, I know thee. I know thee. I know thee. So stop trying, so, so, so stop trying to cut yourself down because of where you've been. Because God knows you. Notice, notice, notice. It says this. He says, no, 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 no. Now, part of what Jesus came to do, among other things, was he came to establish who we are. I know thee mean, means, it's like, thank God that God knows me. But I also, but, 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 the, but the message is, do you know yourself? Do you know yourself? As many of us, we're living, we're living, we have portrayed a version that is far limited than what God has called you to be. The version of your, you, you, you ever watch the, the movies where they have separate versions in three different realities? Are you following me now? And, and, th- and the, the same individual, but they have three different versions in three different dimensions. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying what version? What 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 version? What what version are you living out today? What version are you living out today? Is it the best version you could possibly be? Okay, what am I saying? After you've done your best, that's all you can do. I say after you've done the best, that's all you can do. Yeah. This is the best in my, uh, this, is my, this is the best on this level. Now maybe you come next, maybe, maybe if you come next week or next year, maybe I'll have a better, a better message for you. But, but right now, this is the best I can do. I said, this is the best I can do. So you want somebody else? You want, you want, so, so you want, you want to go to Texas, go to T.D. Jakes? That's the best he can do. But I ain't T.D. Jakes. Are you following me now? No, I'm not going to compare myself with T.D. Jakes because, because if I compare myself with him, I already lose. What am I saying? You got to be the best version of yourself. Every day, this is the best, this is the best husband I can possibly be. Yeah, if it ain't good enough, you just let me, go, let me go to sleep and wake back up. Talk to me, let me go to sleep and wake back up. You may get another version. But for today, this is the best version I can, I can give you. Anybody, are you, are you all following me right now? So what am I saying? I'm saying don't, don't, li- don't, don't live in depression. I don't, I, I, depression has never hit my house. I'm never depressed. You can't make, on my watch day, I'm still never depressed. Can never make me depressed. Why? Because I'm doing the best I can. Are you following me now? Okay, okay, l- 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 let me go back in the text. It says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou, thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctify thee. Hmm? I sanctify thee and I ordain thee a prophet to what? Nations. Nations. What am I saying? The version that you're playing out right now, you're thinking too small. You having a local impact, and God wants you to have a global impact. Nations! Nations. He speaks to this 17-year-old boy. Some say he's 17, 20, but he speaks to this young man, and he says... Before you were formed in your mother's womb. And so before you became a zygote, an embryo, a fetus, God says, I did what? I knew you. And I called you and I ordained you. So in reality, when we embrace the will of God, we're simply working out what, what has already happened. <laughs> Woo! I said, in reality, if you embrace the will of God, you're simply walking out what has already happened. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verse 10, it says this. It says, it says, you are my workmanship, created unto Christ Jesus, which God has before ordained, before ordained, before ordained, predestined that you should walk in them. So I'm simply walking out 
what has already happened. Are you following me this morning? Now, you thought you were just going to hear this, this, me- this common message from this, from this familiar verse. Are you far- and, and God is lifting up all these things in this one verse alone. Okay, let, let, let me, let's, let's, let's go a little further. Let's go a little further. It says this. It says, it says, it says, it says, okay, okay, l- let me give you this. Let me give you this. Let me give you, let me give you this. Part of what Jesus came to do was to restore who you are. The Bible says this in, in Luke 10 and, and the Luke, in Luke 19 verse 10, it says this, the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Hmm? The son of man has come what? To, 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 to seek and to do what? To save that which was lost. Notice what it did not say. It did not say the son of man has come to save that who was lost. Hmm? Who was lost is an individual. Which was lost is something the individual is supposed to do. Are you following me now? The Son of Man has come to save, to seek and to save. That He said that in reference to, 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 to approaching Zacchaeus. The one, that, the one that, was, that was short in every area of his life. And some of us, we, you, you may not be called Zacchaeus, but, 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 but the truth is, if we, if we look into your life, there are certain places in your life that you are short. I dare say, all of us in this room, there are certain places in our lives that we are short. And Zacchaeus, the message is, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So the question is, what was lost? Because the Bible is is not segmented. It's a thread. It's a thread. What was lost? I dare say three things. Number one is a man's identity was lost. His identity. Identity means his character, his image. His distinction was lost. Number two, his, I, his, his dignity. Somebody said dignity. His dignity. That's it. That is his worth, self-worth, self-esteem. One thing, one thing you got to know, if you're going to win, you got to have a good self-esteem. Self-esteem is big. Self-esteem, another word, another word to use with that is confidence. Confidence. If you're going to win. Now, if you're just going to if if you, if you let, let, let life happen, then, then, be what, then be what it may. But if you're going to win, you've got to have confidence. Confidence. People are attracted to confidence. Not cockiness. Are you following me now? Not cockiness, but confidence. I am who I am, and I am, com- I am comfortable in my own skin. I'm not trying to be you nor do you. Are you following me now? No, I'm, I'm going to be who God has called me to be, and I'm going to have a ball doing it. Are you following me now? Okay, I got the close. I got the close. Number, 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 n- 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 number three, number three, number three, number three. Man's, what was lost? We said, what was lost? Man's identity, man's dignity, man's destiny. Man's destiny. Man's destiny eludes his spot. Where, where he's supposed to be. Where are you supposed to be? Where are you supposed to be? Because... The truth is, the truth is, I'm doing a dance up in here because this is my spot. This is my spot. Monday, when I go into the boardroom on Monday, I, 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 that's my spot. I, I, you fall, where, where, where is life is much enjoyable when you know where your spot is. Any stage, any age you are, you got to know where's my spot. Young people, know where your spot is early. Find out, go to God. God, what, not, not what is popular, not what makes money, but what is, where is my spot? I have a young, young teenager in the house, and she's as smart as all get out. But I got I to gotta push her and say, where is your spot, honey? I know what daddy did, but where is your spot? 
And so she's vacillated. One minute she wants to be a neuroscientist. Another minute she wants to be an engineer. But she's vacillated. She wants to be a pro tennis. Baby, you can't do all of them. But you can do most of them, but not all of them. Because I, I reject the idea that because God has called me to do one, because God has called me to do something, that that something becomes one thing. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So, so somebody said, "Well, well, Pastor, if you become, if you have, if you have five thousand people in here, would you, would you, would you still, would you still do your your circular job as an engineer? You better, you better believe it." Yeah. Yeah, because just because you met me as a preacher doesn't mean that's all I can do. As a matter of fact, before I, be, before I knew preaching, I was, I was taking things apart and taking things and putting things back. And I was not always successful in putting it back, and you thought, but I took, it, I took it apart, no doubt. My brother said, yes, he did. He, he, can, he was right there with me. Are you following me? Sometimes he'd be sleeping and I'll do it. And in the way hours of the morning, he, I'll, he'll wake up and I've already done the damage. And I'm begging him for, for damage control. Because somehow it was together. But when I got done with it, are you following me now? It somehow I missed a couple of pieces were, 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 were left on the table, and which should have been in the whole, the whole system. So there's something missing. I, got to, I need some help. I need some help before daddy wakes up. I need some help before mama wakes up. Are you following me? What am I saying? Some of us are in that, in that, in that, in that mind frame right now. We need help before God shows up. And the truth is, if you just allow God to show up, he'll manifest and help you and teach you and lead you where you know to be. Okay, okay, I got to go. I said my time is up. I got too much to give. I got too much to give and too little time. And so I got to abbreviate something. Number, number, number the fourth thing that, the fourth thing, thing that man lost, I know I told you three, but four. The fourth thing that man lost is man's dominion. His dominion. His rule. You are built to rule. You are built to govern. Are you, you are built to subdue. You are built to take charge. Are you following me now? Why are you allowing others to take charge of you when you have been built? Your DNA causes you to rule and reign in this world. Are you following me now? Okay, 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 okay. Now, now, now. Ah, okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let uh, me. Okay, 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 okay. Before I formed thee in the, in, the, in the belly, I knew thee. Before you come out of, out of your mother's womb, I sanctified thee. I ordained thee that thou, for thee to be a prophet to the nations. Then said I. Ah, or no. Ah. Then said I, notice what it says. It says, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. What am I saying? It is always, it is always, it is always the, it is always in humans, it is always in our notion to always believe that we cannot do what God has called us to do. Are you following me? There's always, there's always something, there's always something, come on, there's always something that suggests that you cannot do what God has called you to do. Now, that's not just you, but that's from the, from the beginning of time. When God spoke to, when he spoke to Abraham, Abraham wrestled with the fact that God spoke to him. Matter of fact, even after God spoke to him and he knew it, he also still wrestled. Are you following me now? It's, what am I saying? It's always, it's that any time God tells you to do something, human nature is you begin to assess who you are, your skills, your ability, your education, and you submit, you submit to the idea that I'm not good enough. The truth is, that God never calls the qualified. I said God never does what? He never calls the qualified. He qualifies those that he called. 
knows. In your calling, he qualifies you. So the Bible says, he says, he says to the, he says to the, um, he says to, uh, 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 to the disciples, he says, he says, he says, come after me and I will make you to become what? Fishers of men. It's not called the qualified. He qualifies those that he calls. And so anytime you find yourself feeling, feeling inadequate, as to what God has called you to be, understand this, you're in good company. Yeah, you're in good company. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 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 so he would call a man, he would call, he would call a man David, and David was a young boy and felt what unqualified. He would call a man called uh, 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 he would call a call, call a man uh, a young man call, called uh, uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, Joseph and Joseph was unqualified. Are you following me now? He would call a Peter and Peter was what unqualified. And the, the the thing about this is that he knows the end from the beginning, but he still calls you anyway. He knew that Peter would, would deny him, but he still called him anyway. So he calls Jeremiah at a young age, 17 at best. Are you following me now? And he says this. He says, he says, before you were formed in the belly, I knew you. And I ordained you a prophet. I, I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I called you a prophet to the nations. Then he says this, Jeremiah responds and says, cannot speak because I'm a child. And that, that right there, I can bear, I can, I, can, I can identify with Jeremiah. I can identify with Jeremiah because I used to stutter. I could not put two sentences to get to, to, together. I would, I would stutter. You have to wait. You have to wait some time just to hear me make my thought, so I could understand the nuance of Jeremiah saying, "I cannot speak because I'm a child." Matter of fact. My, 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 my parents would have a teacher to come in my, in, into our home, and they would, tell, they would tell them, he cannot learn. He got coconut head. Ain't nothing in there. Nothing in there. Praying mama that wouldn't give up on me. Are you following me? And even when, even when I repeated a grade, she still didn't give up on me. Are you following me now? And so, and so, and, and so, if, even when I could, I couldn't do what they wanted me to do. People were praying for me when I didn't know how to pray for myself. Didn't know how to pray for myself. Why? Because before I was formed in my mother's womb, he knew me, and he ordained me a prophet to the nations. Then said, "I God, I cannot speak." I cannot speak. I cannot talk. And I could hear God and some and there may be people in this place and say, God, God, you know what? I know what you're telling me to do, but I cannot do it. I hear God say, am I, the, am I not the one that made the mouth? Am I not the one that made whatever, whatever you're missing? Am I not the one that, that made it? And if you go to God, I said, if you go to God, now, if you go to somebody else, you may be missing something. But if you go to God, go to God. And so, and so when I'm talking, when I'm saying, I'm preaching like this because I know from a young age, my life would have taken a different turn if God, if the word of the Lord hadn't come to me. Am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. God is still forming me. Just like everybody else. God is still forming us. Are you for, God is still forming us. God is still forming us. And so be patient with yourself. Are you following me? And allow God to form you. Real quickly, and I close. Real quickly. Real quickly, I close. It says this. God speaks to him and says, Say not. Say not. 
Otherwise, there's some things that you ought not say. Say not. It says, look, look, look what it says. Look what it says in verse 10. Excuse me. In verse, in, 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 in verse, uh, in verse 7. But, but, the, but the Lord says unto me, say not, I'm a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Say not. The Bible says this in, in Proverbs 18, verse 21, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Say not. Say not. You keep, you, keep, you, you keep saying, you keep saying, nobody likes me, nobody wants me. You keep saying, I'll never do that, I'll never get there. What, what are you doing? You, are, you have subscribed to death words. I can never be anything, I can't learn, I can't go to school. How, how come? You have a head just like anybody else. Got a mind just like anybody else. You will go to school. You will learn. You will grab. I'm, I'm glad that I didn't have a parent that gave me a choice. No, it's not, it's not are you going to go to school. You are going to school. You are going to school. Ain't no choice about this. Huh? You are going to college. Now, now, okay, maybe, maybe you know, 50-50, you know, well, should I go to college or should I? No, no, that, that wasn't even, that wasn't even my choice. It wasn't even my, it wasn't even in my head to make that choice. Why? At 16, I'm too stupid to make that choice. Are you following me now? So you give a, you give a 16-year-old the choice of a whole lifetime and then make the wrong one. Are you following me now? Go to school. Get all the education you can get. Are you following me now? Do all, be all that you can be. Maybe you want this. Thus said the Lord. Yeah, that, that's it right there. Maybe that's what you. Maybe that's what you're waiting for. Are you following me now? Okay, okay. I got to go. I got. I got to go. Notice what it says. It says this. Say not. Part of the spirit of faith is, I believe. And therefore I speak. You've got to be willing and bold enough to say what you believe. It's in your saying that is in your creating. It's in your saying that's in your creating. We look at words as to communicate. The primary function of words is not to communicate. The first use of words, words in the Bible is called the, the law of first use. The first use of, of words in the Bible was not just to create, was not just to communicate, it was to create. Are you following me now? And so words were built in, was made manifest, not to just communicate thought. Are you following me now? But to create your life. So it's in your, it's in your, it's in your, it's in your what? It's, it's in your speaking that you're what? Creating. It's in your speaking that you're what? Creating. All right. Say not. Say not. Say not. Say not that I'm a child. Because I'm going to send you to places. And wherever I send you, you're going to go. What am I saying? God wants to send you places. I said God wants to do what? He wants to send you places. Not, not, not somebody else. Somebody say me. me. Me, yeah, yeah. God wants to send you places. Yeah. He wants to send you places. The Bible ends and says this as I end my message this morning. He says this. He says, see. Notice, he says, see, I have this day I have what this day the problem is we keep seeing not this day but tomorrow 
tomorrow. And what happens? Tomorrow becomes tomorrow, becomes tomorrow, becomes tomorrow. And faith does not work in your tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> come on now, come on. Come on now. Faith does not work in what? In your tomorrow. But it says, now faith is. Now some, some struggle with that, that the word now suggests a conjunction between the, the, last, the last chapter in, Gen in, in the last chapter in, in Hebrews chapter 10 and connecting to, to the first chapter, or the, verse, the first verse, excuse me, in, in Hebrews chapter 11. So they say, well, the, the word now is a, is a conjunction word. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not a function of time, but a function of conjunction. You could have well said, and faith. Are you following me now? But regardless of what, what it is, if we, were, if we were to take the word now off, the Bible still reads, faith is. 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 So, 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 so my, my Hebraic and, and my, my Greek training would allow me to tell you this, that that, that word now doesn't suggest time as it, as it suggests conju conjunction. But at the same time, faith is, faith is, faith is, not was, not will be, faith is, faith is. Somebody say faith is, faith is. And so the Bible says, the, the Bible says this. It says, it says, because faith is, the Bible says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so you would see a man called David that, that would say this. He would say in, in, in 1 Samuel 17, he would say this to a giant in front of him. That if you were to if you were to bet, you would have bet, you would have you would have bet hands down against David. The giant was almost nine and a half feet tall. We have not witnessed that that large of an individual on planet Earth today. Nine and a half feet tall. Now, some say, well, Andrew, Andrew the giant. Well, he was big, but I'm not sure it was nine feet tall. Sh Shaq O'Neal was big, but I'm not sure he's nine feet, not nine and a half feet tall. Are you following me now? This giant is in front of David. David is a 17-year-old boy. It's amazing how God is talking to young people. Jeremiah is almost 17. David is 17. Joseph is 17. Young people, I've come for you. I've come for you. Matter of fact, this whole, this whole, this whole outreach was for young people. You all old folks, you, all, you got money. You don't need this. I wanted to get the young folk. So I'm going to try again. I said, I'm going to try again. Are you following me? Because I'm, I'm coming after the young folk, the college student, the 19-year-old, the 16-year-old, the 18-year-old, the 21-year-old, the, 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 the 25-year-old. The, the I'm coming for the young folk. Because if I can catch them while they're young, I can turn their destiny around. I don't need nothing from you. I need absolutely zero from you. I want to give you all that God has given me. If I can bless one person, if I can turn somebody's life around, I've done my job. And so that young man called David said this, looking at that giant in front of him, I don't know what giant is in front of you today. I don't know what giant is in front of you today. Giant of unforgiveness. Giant of lack. Giant of pain. Emotional problems, physical problems, financial problems. I don't know what giant is in front of you today. But I do know that the Bible says, David said this. He says, this day, this day, not tomorrow. Somebody say this day. This day. When is God going to deliver you? Somebody said this day. Somebody said this day. I said, somebody said, this day. I said, I said, say this day. This day. This day. This day, not tomorrow. This day, God wants to ch change your life around. This day, God brought you in this place. 
to turn your whole life around. You thought you came for a gas card. God came for you. I said, you, can't, you thought you came for a gas card. God came to gas your life up. Are you following me now? And do something unique in your life that has never been done, done, done before. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. Notice. He speaks to Abraham and says this. He says, see, of this day. He says, he says, look from where you are. Northwards, southwards, westward. As far as your eyes can see. Guess what? I've already given it to you. What am I saying? God says, I know you. God says, this day. Your life is going to change for the better. There's something God wants to do in this place. This day in Jesus' name. Do you receive that today? Somebody give God praise and give God glory in the house. Stand to your feet. Heads about, eyes are closed. Help me out. Heads about, eyes are closed. You're here today and you say, Pastor, this message was for me. I'm not, I'm not asking you if you're saved. I'm not asking you if you're back. I'm not asking you if you've walked away from God. I'm asking you, did God speak to you this morning? Did God talk to you? Talk, talk to you this morning in such a deep and personal way? Did God minister to your inside? Did something bear witness with you? If you're here today, you say, Pastor, the word of the Lord came to me like it came to Jeremiah in such a profound way. And I want to acknowledge it. I want to tell God. I want to let the enemy know I heard God this morning. If you're here this morning and God spoke to you, just lift your hands up all over the building. All over the building. I see those hands all over the building. All over the building. Again, I'm not saying that you're saved or not saved. I'm not, that's, not, that's, not the, that's not the invitation right now. The invitation is, did God talk to you? Did God talk to you? I see those hands. Father, you see the hands of your people, God. I'm asking you to touch their hands out there as they have extended their hands towards you. God, they're not extending it towards me, they're extending it towards you. And you said, that you said that with this message that you know them. And if I'll preach this message that you would do something incredible, something amazing, something, something awesome in their lives. And so, Father, great God that you are, I have done all that I can do. And so, Father, minister to your people in the name of Jesus. Touch everyone from the young to the old and have the hands, the hands are lifted, God. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch him and touch him until it becomes real to them. Touch him until demons begin to flee. Touch him between as it relates to, to their circumstances and situations. Touch him until their circumstances are changed for the better, oh God. Father, we give you praise and give you glory. We give you praise and we give you glory. We bless you for what you're doing in this place, God. Have your way in the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way, God, in the name of Jesus. My next invitation is for those that, those that are not saved that you want to be saved. You have not given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. You, the truth is you've walked away from God. But God brought you here to tell you that he knows you. He knows where you are. He knows your address. He knows what you've done. And there's still no condemnation of those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You're here today, you say, Pastor, I want to give my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to sell out to God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. I want that gift this morning. I've played around church, I've been around church, but I have not said Jesus come into my heart. If it's you today, God, God, the word of the Lord has come to you specifically today concerning your whole life. Salvation is the most important thing in the whole of the earth. If you're not saved today, 
going to spend eternal life. And you want to know, I'll give me the honor of introducing you to the best person that ever lived. His name is Jesus, the Savior, the Redeemer, the, the, the chain breaker, the bondage releaser, the palm of Gilead, the star of David, the Almighty God, the first and the last. If you have not said, been, you've been around church, but you have not said, Jesus, come into my heart. I'm coming for young people, for old people, not, 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 not to leave you out also. You say, I want to give my heart to the God. If that's you, just wave your hand at me real quick. Real quick. I see that hand. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. I see that hand. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. I see that hand. God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that have their hands lifted up, God. Father, saturate their lives. Do a work in their lives like never before. I give you the praise. I give you the glory. Have your way, oh God. Make yourself new, alive on the inside of them. In the name of Jesus, repeat after me, everybody. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. I make you my Savior, my Redeemer, my King, my Fortress, my Butler. You are my Savior, God. In Jesus' name, I renounce all of his ways. Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. This day, in Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise and give God glory. Come on, give God praise and give God glory. I said give God praise and give God glory. Hallelujah! Amen, amen. Praise God. Amen. Were you blessed today? I said, were you blessed today? Somebody give God praise one more time. Hallelujah. Real quickly. We want to finish our worship experience. Go ahead and sit down. We want to finish our worship experience. You're here today. You say, Pastor, I want to sow into what I've heard. I want to sow into the kingdom of God. I want to give to God. I want to, I want to be a blessing. I know you're going to be giving a lot of gift cards out today, but I want to, I want to sow into what, what God is doing, what God is doing in this place. 100% of whatever you give goes into the furtherance of the kingdom of God. 100%. Nothing makes its way into my pocket. 100%. I take zero financial compensation from this church. So you want to you want to sow into what God has given what God has given you. You want to you want to sow into it. Go ahead and do that now. Often envelopes on the seat pocket in front of you. Often envelopes on the seat pocket in front of you. Go ahead and um, put your name, your address. Hallelujah. Your name and your address, put it on there. And whatever God has called you to give, go ahead and do that. I dare not tell you what God, God, what God is saying. You got God for yourself. Most of us, is, I've already done this already by way of electronic giving, and I want to thank you for it. Some of us want copies. We want um, physical check. And go ahead and write your name, your address have all the potent information, please write in English and not in tongues. Amen. And not in Ebonics either. Amen. Praise God. Because what happens is they, it comes all, it all filters back to me. Well, Pastor, what is this saying? I don't know. I do not know. Amen. And so please do us the favor of writing legibly. Somebody say legibly. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you so very much for coming and for being patient with the Word of God. That's what I do. I preach. That's what I do. I can't sing. I can't, I can't necessarily write. I can't, I, can't play, I can't play baseball. I can't play hockey. I, I, I can't play football. I can hardly play soccer, but I can preach. That's what I do. And so if you let me, if you let me loose, you, you, you better reel me in because it's going to be two hours, three hours before I finish preaching. Are you following me? So I, I have to discipline myself to stop. Are you following me now? You want a preacher that, that, that you, never, you, never, you never hear the bottom of him. I say you want a preacher that you never hear the bottom of him. Amen. Praise God. And if he's tied, if he's tied to God, guess what? You can never hear the bottom. Are you following me now? All right. Praise God. 
Praise God. All over the building, all over the building, people are giving. Thank you so much for doing that. By way of, if you want to give by way of your phone, it's right there on the screen. Young people, good to see you in the house. All the young people, make some noise. Come on now. All the young people, make some noise. Woohoo! Amen. 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 Got the 40 something making some. Shoot, I'm young. Hallelujah. Praise God. 50 something making some noise. Shoot, I'm young. Amen. I said, all the young people, make some noise. Amen. Amen. I got some 60 year olds making some noise. I got some 70 year olds making some noise. I got some 80 year olds making some noise. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a high honor for me to, for me to be here and to preach the word of God to you. That one person came is a blessing. I said that one person came is a blessing. Sometimes we say, we say who didn't come, but that one person came and God spoke to one person. That's a blessing. That's a success. And you follow me now. And if you play, if you praise God for the little, God will see to it that your little will become much. The Bible says this, though your beginning be small, your latter end should greatly increase. Are you following me now? Amen. Praise God. All right, if you're ready to give, go ahead and stand to your feet. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. We got plenty to do. Amen. We got plenty. We got uh, gift cards to give out. Amen. We got plenty to do. We have um, we got food to eat. Amen. Uh, 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 excuse me. We got games to play. Amen. I hope you came to play. Lots of good games. Amen. So if you get the gift card to go, you would have done the service. Amen. We got lots of food. Amen. They tell me, well, maybe it's just for me, so I might want to give that out. Amen. I'm going to be eating some, some beef ribs at some point. Amen. I don't know when, but I'm going to be eating some beef ribs. Now, you may not get that here, but, but I'm going to be eating some beef ribs. Amen. Praise God. Amen. At least that's what they told me. Amen. So, 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 you know, you'll holler at me. I'm going to tell you how doing them beef ribs stays. Amen. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Ready to give? Okay. Let's get the, the, the basket. Let's pray over the offering. We'll get the basket. Pass the basket. Go ahead and get that. Uh, then we'll, we'll pray over the service, dismiss the service. We got lots of food, lots of cake. Amen. We got some for you to take from mama and them. You can take some home. Amen. Lots of stuff. Let's pray. Let's pray real quick. Let's pray. Father, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. Thank you for the seed that, that people are sowing into the kingdom of God. Your people are supporting the kingdom of God. And I thank you for it. I thank you, Lord, that as they sow their seed, the Bible says, cast your seed upon the water and it will come back after many days. I declare in the name of Jesus that every dime that any, any individual gives represents a destiny. Every penny reps represents a person. And every nickel represents a name that you will touch. Father, we give you the praise. We give you glory and we give you honor. We're giving faith and we are believing you for miracles to happen in our financial life or in whatever, whatever area we're believing you, God, for. We bless you today and we honor you and we bless you in advance. It's in Jesus' name. Everybody believe it said, Amen. And thank God. Amen. Pass the bucket, please. Very quickly, pass the bucket. Very Any KSU students in the house? Any KSU students? Woo! Somebody give God praise for them. Woohoo! Woo amen, amen. Praise God. Okay. Amen. I'm coming for your school. I'm coming for your school. That's where I'm coming. Amen. I'm coming for every KSU student in that place. And you're going to help me do that. Amen. 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 So don't leave. I, don't, I just employed you. Amen. Praise God. 
Amen. Those of us that are online, God bless you. Good to have you in the house. Uh, I trust that you are blessed by the word of God. We are here. Uh, this is our, our fall festival Sunday. We're going to be passing out gift cards to the first 100 families. And so everybody that, that, that needs one gets one because we're not up to, four, not up to 100. But God bless you. Thank you for, for, for listening, to the, listening to the message. We pray that the word of God blessed your life in such a unique way. And I'll be here next week preaching the word of God in such a relevant way. And until I meet you again, God bless you and may his hand be upon you in Jesus' name. God bless you.